right, so I'll uh, call the Board of Adjustments and Appeals meeting to order. Uh, Ms. Warwick, if you could please take roll. Ms. Schmitz? Here. Ms. Flynn? Present. Ms. Purdy? Here. Mr. Elstrom? Mr. Taylor? Mr. Friesen? Present. Mr. Weiger? Chair Finn? Uh, and I'm here. And I'll apologize to you guys if my nose starts bleeding. I cut myself shaving. So, pretty exciting up here. <laughs> um, so there are uh, five members present, therefore four affirmative votes are required to grant a variance or appeal. The board is authorized to grant or deny a variance by part three, section 60 of the Englewood City Charter. Anyone aggrieved by a decision rendered by this board may appeal that decision to a court record. However, such appeal must be made within 30 days of the board's decision. Any approved variance is effective at the end of the appeal period. Building permits for construction associated with an approved variance will not be issued until the appeal period is ended. Building permits must be obtained and construction begin with 100, within 180 days of the variance's effective date. Procedure for the meeting is that the case will be introduced, an overview be given by staff, the applicant will present their request and reasons that the variance should be granted. Uh, any proponents will be given an opportunity to speak. Opponents will also address the board if they're present. And if needed, staff will address the board again. The public hearing for case number VAR 2017-019 for Stephen and Kathleen Mulhern at 2750 South Emerson Street is now open. The applicants are requesting variances for an attached garage to encroach 11 feet into the required 25 foot front setback, for the attached garage to encroach one foot into the required seven foot side setback. Additionally, the applicants are requesting a variance for a front porch to encroach six feet into the required 25 foot front setback. And these are variances to table 16-6-1.1 of the Englewood Municipal Code. I have uh, verification and publication of posting for the property. Staff, if you could uh, please give an overview. Good evening. Um, so you already went over most of the requests. Oh, sorry. Yeah. They said staff give an overview. My bad. Yeah, no, staff, please. Yeah. Let's do my. Uh, yep. Yeah. Charles. Sorry about that. Got a little ahead of myself. Um, so you already went over the request, um, so we'll just skip ahead. Um, so this property is located in northeast Inglewood in an R1A zone district. Um, it's near the end of its, um, its street. Oops, sorry. This property is 13,300 um, square feet. Um, the standard for an R1A zone district is about 9,000 square feet. Um, there's an existing 2,600 square foot single family residence on the property, um, and the applicants are proposing to add about 1,000 square feet um, through all their additions to the property. Um, this house was also constructed in 1941 and then annexed into the city of Inglewood in 1946. <coughs> Um, this is a, just an overview of the <coughs> neighbors that um, voted in favor, or not voted in favor, but um, were in favor of the variance. Um, you'll notice from your staff report to this area, there's actually two additional ones, um, one being the northwestern one, as well as being the southern one. Um, additionally, tonight, the applicants also brought three more that were in favor. All three of these are further north on the street. Um, as you can see from the site plan, the applicants are proposing to add a garage in front of the currently existing one-car garage. Um, this garage would encroach into the front setback 11 feet. Um, this would be 14 feet from the property line at its furthest point and 33 feet from the curb line. Um, presently, this, um, presently, this house also has no front porch. Um, the proposed front porch would encroach into the front setback by 6 feet. Um, currently, the code allows for a projection into the front setback of five feet, so this would actually be a variance to one foot further than what 
is currently allowed. So uh, the suggested motion uh, should actually read uh, front porch to encroach one foot into the required 20 foot setback? Uh, you could do it that way as well. Um, okay. Yeah, mainly we put it in, in this way just because it's a little, a little easier on the wording. Um, okay. But yes, you could do it one foot and then they could project the five feet into the front setback. Okay. From there, um, so on this slide you can see the, um, on the top is the currently existing home and on the bottom is the um, proposed. So the, um, it definitely adds an aesthetic value to the home and brings it, um, brings it out a little more and gives it a little more features, um, <coughs> including on, and yeah, it gives it more features. Um, that's it for the staff report. If you have any questions for me, um, be happy to answer them. Um, so looking at this, the bottom elevation, it looks like just the roof overhang on the right-hand side of the proposed is, I guess, is that the foot that we're talking about into the seven foot side setback? Um, roof overhangs can actually project into the side setbacks as well. Um, it's kind of hard to see and it's, it's slightly less than a foot of what they're proposing, but there is some wall that is gonna be over. Okay. I think it was, I think it was something smaller, yeah. closer to like six inches than it was. What that is, that's, I'm just trying to figure out where. So that goes, that's on, if you go to this page in yours, you can kind of see it a little bit better, um, how much is encroaching. It's actually just a very, very minimal amount that's actually encroaching into that setback. Does that require a variance or you said it not? Um, it would require, a, it, well, um, it would require a variance, yes. Okay, is that within the proposed motion? Or yes, that is the, um, one foot into the side setback. That would be into the required seven foot side setback. Part of okay. the motion. Yeah, okay. yeah. There's two setbacks for the garage. One being the 11 feet into the front setback, and then one of less than a foot into the side setback. And then there's one for the porch to encroach, as we talked about the one foot and then a projection of five. Why does the city automatically allow five feet? projections. Yes. Uh, it's mainly to give more of an aesthetic kind of differentiation in the front of the house. So if you only had it where you had no projection, you would have to build your house either further back and then now take away some of your backyard or you would have to have no front porch and it would kind of just keep lots of flat houses across the city. Is there a reason this city just went with five? Is there a mathematical reason or is it just a arbitrarily picked number? Um, I don't believe okay. um, I, I would assume that five feet is probably the minimum that you could have where it'd be a, a functional porch at all gotcha. um, it's honestly probably a little bit low on the functionality but it would allow for probably that's probably the low minimum that you could have to have any functionality yeah. on your porch okay for code purposes or something right thank you So, mr. Charles let's talk about the right-of-way okay which I don't know if you've mentioned if because I think that is somewhat a unique aspect on this street. Right, um, so for, for this street and for this house in particular, um, the right-of-way is actually quite large compared, or the right-of-way on like what you would traditionally think of as the property, like in the grass, is actually quite large comparative to a normal um, street. Usually a standard street has like eight or nine feet of right-of-way that extends past the, where the curb line is so this would be your water and sewer lines are, as well as the sidewalk and all that. So could you go to slide two? Sure. This one or? Uh, either one, because both of them show the right, because that's the lot. Right. And then the right of way is uh, to the edge of the street is how, what's the distance? Um, from the back of the curb to the property line is 19 feet. 19 feet. Yep. And it's my understanding uh, the city really wants to turn this into a four-lane road since it dead ends right there at the ditch. <laughs> um, you'd have to talk to our transportation department about that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the site currently doesn't have a garage? Uh, it has a um, one-car garage on the okay. property. Yep, and it's actually um, on this one. You can kind of see it on the far right 
left-hand side of the structure, there's a one-car garage. With a, a carport also, right? right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a one-car garage and then a carport next to it. Okay. Um, and what, they will, what they're planning to do is make this a two-car garage and then the one-car garage would then be converted into a livable space to make the livable space a little bigger. No, sorry. Right. You can address that in a second. Sorry, we have to swear you in. So um, we, we can we can yeah. get to that. Um, perfect. Do you have anything else uh, to add right now? Um, I do not believe so. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Um, so this is an area of Inglewood that doesn't have alleys, correct? R correct. This street and this area kind of does not have alleys. How big of an area is that? that Uh, I am not sure. I'll I can tell you that, that one. <laughs> we don't have an alley. We live two blocks yeah. away. Yeah, so that's, we don't. Uh, the next street over, which uh, the name escapes me, doesn't. Emerson doesn't. The next block over doesn't. Okay. Uh, Clarkson's further. Yeah. They don't have alleys. All right, I think, any other questions for staff? All right, perfect. Um, if the applicant may please come forward to testify in the case, and please state your name and address to the secretary who will administer the oath. Stephen Mulhern, 2750 South Emerson Street, Inglewood, Colorado. Good evening. Thanks for uh, letting us present this. Just maybe a couple other little things, and you can kind of add, ask questions. My wife, Kathleen, is also here. Um, just a little story about us. We moved to Inglewood, I think, right after we got married, about 19. Um, I'm not going to goof this up. 19, we, we got Your married wife is present. Two. I don't want to screw this up. So it was 84, actually, we moved here. And um, we moved into this house in... Um, 1992 so my son was about nine months my daughter was not quite two years old so we've been here since you know quite a quite a long time uh, we've updated the interior here and there uh, but we're at that stage of life where the kids are now gone and it's that question of do you update or do you move and Inglewood really is our our home our preferred home uh, we enjoy the community. We've done a lot of stuff in the community. So as we've gone through the planning with our architect, and it's been a, a process with him, uh, one of the things that has brought us to this evening is this addition of the garage and extending out. As you've pointed out, there are a number of pieces about this site that are rather unusual. Uh, we don't have the alley. Uh, we could, by code, extend the garage to the back, and that's quite common with some of the houses in the area where they blow them down and they put the garage in the back. Uh, for us to do that, it would require a, a substantial uh, amount of concrete on what would be the southerly edge, as well as a uh, disruption, disruption of uh, quite, a, quite a bit of education, probably about eight uh, trees we would have to remove. So we don't think that's the best option. So, so we've gone through the various plans and we've gone through these on a number of levels. This is the one that we've kind of settled in on. Um, it does, as you see, project out. Uh, it's only about six inches on that uh, south side versus the one foot. But as we've talked to staff, just for sake of disclosure, we're not trying to kind of game it. We're just saying at least one feet or one foot. Um, the, the, the porch itself, we haven't final, finalized the design there. As you can see, it's kind of a half porch. Uh, the thought might be that you extend it across the whole front. But at this point, we only have that half porch, and we're asking for that one-foot variance to step out. Uh, and then the garage depth uh, comes out about 11 feet into the setback, uh, but you do have a very generous from the right-of-way to that front, uh, so you're not going to feel like, oh, gosh, we're right up on the street with, uh, with the garage itself. So um, one question that was asked, and, and just maybe to address that, the existing one-car garage, uh, we will maintain that more as storage and for tools and some other things. The house, interestingly, is uh, crawl space, slab on grade. Um, the, there's a, a little extension, if you looked at the site pan, that does have an exterior cellar. So unlike some of the older homes where you would have a basement and you'd have storage and what have you, this does have one of the deficiencies of, of the 
you know, dated home that we have. But again, it's home for us, and we're trying to update it in that regard. Um, I think those are my just initial comments to give you a little story. And uh, we do know the neighbors. We have spoken to each one of them individually. Uh, the neighborhood is very, very close. Uh, it's turning over a little bit, and what's fun about it, uh, it's turning over with folks that very much where we were back in 1992 with some young kids. So we're, we're quite, quite pleased to stay. So those are my comments. I'll pause there and see if you have questions. Can we address what you're... Yeah. So what's driving the um, garage size? I mean, it's kind of an odd size. You're 25.2 by 25.6. Yeah, good comment. The garage could be as small as 22 by 22. Yeah, thank you. Um, We've looked at a couple of different sizes. I have a uh, forerunner that had a truck at different times, and as we've looked at vehicle sizes within that to get a little bit larger vehicle in there, that's one of the things that we've done that, plus to give some generous pieces. We have camping pieces in different parts of, uh, of the uh, um, interior. We haven't done a full interior layout, but it really has been vehicle size that we have sized it with with our architect, as well as some of the door sizes, and we haven't finalized the exact pitch of what that height might be. Uh, we're still working through that, but the door sizes, which is what we've kind of worked through versus a single door, the double door is architecturally what we like. So the existing garage, uh, from reading through your material, uh, does not, there's not a door from the garage into the house? No, sir. So it, today, if you look at the uh, upper elevation, you park in the garage, you come back outside, and then you go where that bay window is. That would be the side door. Okay. So you have to exit the garage to go into the house. And that was the exact layout design when we bought it in 1992. And I believe, I don't think that changed really in the two prior owners from that. Um, so... Your intent is to, and, and this is just more curious than anything, so leave the garage as, as is, and then I'm assuming you'd enter the old garage from the new garage? You would. You would enter the, if you wanted to access that, that old garage space, you would enter it. So the, the, you have two conflicting pieces of grade here, one going to the south where it's dropping, the other, you can't quite see it in this elevation if we had a elevation looking to the north, you're competing against grade from street up to that. So you have kind of this, this southerly slope and then the westerly slope. So the thought would be the new garage you would bring up to grade as the existing garage so you're not comp competing against that slope and you don't have a step into the old garage. But it would allow you to have, again, the storage from that. Access would then be from the south into the door behind the bay window uh, from that garage into the house. Okay. If that makes sense. So you would have, you would have in, a, in a winter day or any kind of adverse weather, you would have direct access into the residence uh, from the garage. So you're going to fill the driveway space to bring that up to grade and level? Exactly right. Exactly right. So we haven't brought in, you know, the, the final civil yet. That's kind of the next step is how much grade change we've got to do. But there are those two competing grades there, and, and that cleans up this site a little bit from a um, just access standpoint as well as kind of a, a, a access standpoint into the home. The home, because you can kind of see that slope, you have, you have three different levels, and the garage actually makes it a fourth level when you, when you – have it in the existing condition. So we're trying to minimize one of those. Um, what's going to happen to the carport? Is it going to be torn down? Because it's, it's still shown, but I think it's shown just for positioning, the, the carport roof there. That There is a carport roof there today, yeah. Right, but is that, is that going away? Is that um, We haven't kind of gotten to that level of detail at this point, but, I mean, it certainly could. We haven't prejudice that. We've talked to the neighbors to the south. They're fine with it. It had gone through that before. Right. We made That's what you got the variance for exactly. before. Well, actually, it wasn't us. It was the prior owner. Okay. So, and that's a that's of record, I believe, and entitled. I mean, I'd piggyback on that a little bit. It, it seems like that encroaches quite a bit into side setback. 
Um, it would be nice, I think, overall for whoever buys that house next, you know, they didn't have something that close to it. So it is a consideration that I think we ought to think about, you ought to think about. Yeah. That's a, it's kind of no man's land between that. If, and not to get into that, we haven't, we could bring you some photos, but it, it does give a, a fairly decent cover for that. Also provides the way that, that site drains. It does allow for drainage to kind of come out towards the street from that. So. I'm going to circle back to the garage size. Sure. If you're only needing six inches and it's 25 foot six, can you live with 25 foot width so we don't have to do that variance? Um, I would certainly defer to you if that was important to you. I've come to you really with what we would prefer in terms of a design uh, with our architect. But if you said to me, listen, it doesn't feel good for us, for it sets a precedent for some reason, I would certainly go back and, and, and give that up. So I would, I would defer to your... Uh, best judgment there, but my preference would be that you that six inch variance it gives us a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of design pieces that we'd prefer not to go to the north because it narrows that space up with the doors we've looked at, and when I say the doors the the garage doors Sorry, Randy, that was about the size. yes, okay. yeah, that's like if we have. If part A is in 11 feet in the front, part B is the one foot to the side. Yeah, and I, and I you know, I, I respect what you guys say there, but again, I've as we've looked at it with the design side and the architectural side, we didn't want to come back to you and say, oh gosh, now we'd like to bump it a little to the south. And that north piece, that starts to narrow pretty quickly, taking that bay out and narrowing up that, that space between the main house and the garage. We're trying to protect that and make that a little more generous. Um, I have one last question. Um, uh, so I walk my dogs down this street, down your street. So I've seen your house. Um, and We've I was, seen you too. I met the quiche hound across the street the other day. He was out. Very sweet dog. Um, the, it, it, to me, it, it's a little confusing because uh, just looking through kind of the carport when I could see your back fence... It looks a lot closer than your lot. I'm just curious if you know the distance between, say, the back of your house to the back of the lot, just approximately. Back? Of so, like, yeah, if, if, if we could go to slide two, I don't know if staff could help. Yeah. So, because it sure doesn't, it'll, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get a feel because when I look at this, it looks like there's quite a bit of room. But when I'm looking at uh, through there, it looked like your fence, there wasn't that much room from, say, the back of your house to the back of your fence. I'm just trying to get a feel for what that distance Can you, is. You, for, so from the back, our back lot, our back lot line to the back of the house? Correct. So it's, say, to the back of the garage. Um, Oh, is it? I, I can't tell if we Yeah, so I don't... Uh, I guess, uh, Tim, Thomas, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm misunderstanding the question. Yeah, so... Can I, can I approach? Yes, uh, because this is this is in the record, so this is just the drawing. I'm just trying to get a feel. So what is... Is this a fence right here? Oh, no. Um, I believe that is a... I can't that's remember. the... Is that... That's the rear step. The rear, the rear setback? Back. I think that's right. So, so okay. from here, this is the back of it, and there's a number of trees back here. Right, uh, and then the and this there. big one. So, also a tree. so approximately from here to here, that's... Well, if we said this is... Um, it's a little... So that's probably okay. 30. Okay. Sure. Yes, sir, it does. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for the applicants? Well, let's Our, talk about the porch. The porch. The porch. Yeah. The porch. The, the six feet is just a number that you 
feel like he can live with better as far as making a porch versus the five? Or yeah, thanks. For, thanks for asking. We've looked at a five foot porch. We've also looked at some others. Um, the six foot gives it just a little bit more room for interaction, whether you put a chair out there or a couple of chairs, if you're going to go ahead and extend it out. And we didn't want to go seven feet because we're not going to use it that much, but the five feet does constrain it a bit. So the studies we've done really says six feet is the right distance. Uh, there's actually a neighbor um, to the south uh, a number of years ago went through the same you know, request. Her porch actually is six feet, so we've kind of gone to school a little bit on that. Uh, there's another neighbor uh, on the west side uh, of Emerson. They've just completed their porch. They did eight feet. Uh, and again, it's just to kind of create a little bit more of an interaction space uh, with the front, front of the house. It, it, it's two purposes. One, I think, is the, the weather piece where you come up to the house today, you get rain, snow on you. Two is to try to create that interaction with the neighborhood, which three of our neighbors have fairly, fairly nice porches, and we do see people out there. Fair question. I think we're good. good. Thank, you, Thank sir. you for your consideration. Appreciate your time. Are there any persons present who wish to speak in favor of this request? If, if you'd like to speak in favor, you can. Sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, other than the applicants, there's uh, no one else here. Are there uh, persons present who wish to be in, speak in opposition of the request? There's no one else here other than us. Uh, staff, do you have any additional comments? Uh, I do not believe so. Okay. Do we have any additional questions for staff? Isn't it your first meeting tonight? That is correct. We should probably have a lot yeah, other sure. questions yeah. for you. Bump it up a little bit. Uh, quick question. <laughs> I, I, want, I want more porch information. Tell me more. Um, I'm looking in the table and... Uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I sorry. I, I, trying to find in the table. Um, we're talking about the projection. What the porch setback is. Oh, where the porch setback is. Yeah. So the porch itself would follow the same setback as the actual house. Um, the code actually allows for projections into the setback, uh, and this could be for things like a roof overhang or a covered porch, or um, just a couple more. But okay. so that that's where the five foot. Is it on the table or is it a CD 16-112 for page number? 1127. Okay. And this would be 1661E or F5E1. hearing is now closed. Uh, do I have a motion? I move that case VAR 2017-019 at 2750 South Emerson Street be granted a variance for an attached garage to encroach 11 feet into the required 25 foot front setback and the attached garage to encroach one foot into the required seven foot setback. Additionally, for 2750 South Emerson to be granted a variance for a front porch to encroach six feet into the required 25 foot front setback. Second. All right. Discussion. I 
I guess I'm having trouble with the need for having the one foot side setback increase given the situation the garage could be 25 feet instead of 25 foot six I don't think that's something that we ought to step into here I mean it's just why grant that one doesn't seem like there's a hardship to that but yeah the the garage itself I see the uniqueness it's a big lot they're trying to get a two car garage somewhere on it without having to pave a lot and chop down trees um, so that part makes sense for uniqueness um, yeah actually and the porch one foot I'm having trouble with as well as well what's unique and it kind of illustrates the point that other sounds like other folks have gotten that one foot more um, I guess in this case it doesn't bother me because the garage is going to be out there further than that anyway. If it was going past the front of the garage, yeah, I'd be agreeing, but it's five feet back of that yet. So it just doesn't bother me. In, in the case. And the side setback doesn't bother me as much because the carport has already been granted a side setback and it's only on the property line like yeah. you said prior to. That's, yeah, that's my feeling. That's my feeling too. It's the side. And, 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 and if we need to chop this up, we can. If we can't come to a, uh, an agreement that this should all be one motion. So that's because if, if there's going to be some. Yeah, I guess if I was going to change it, I'd just sit and take out the one foot. The one foot. Side set back part. And just that. I can live with that. I know, so My that's... My husband really hates when I park in a garage because I park in the middle of the garage, which yeah. is why... I mean, I, realistically, I, realistically, they're doing 20-foot garages, 22-foot garages, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if they wanted to move it six inches further to the north, they probably could. So the, I guess the concern is the slippery slope concern in the next case may not have a full variance carport, but... No, yeah, I, I absolutely understand. Um, if I had something to say about it, and I don't think we can step into that, I'd say we have to take the old one down, the carport, but I don't think we can add that to the... Right, and that was that would be a question if Dugan yeah. was here. <laughs> However, he has uh, conveniently decided to skip this meeting. Um, but that's why I was asking about it, because my feeling was it would be easier in my mind to grant the one foot if we knew the carport was going away. Um, in essence, we're getting, yeah, and I, and, and I don't know if we had someone that did maybe municipal law. Well, I can't give y'all legal advice. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> um, yeah, we've done conditioning in the past, but. Um, I don't think we've done anything like that. No, I don't think we have either. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, so for me, uh, the one foot's not that big of a deal because of the existing carport. Um, and I understand uh, wanting to have a fairly wide garage. So I could live with the one foot. Um, I can also live with the one foot on the porch for the simple sake that this house is built pretty close to the front setback. That's why they need the variance, it, it, because as it is right now, the house sits on the front setback. So they can go five foot automatically. They don't need right. the variance. Okay. Um, so they're just seeking one more foot. It's a bigger lot. It's a somewhat of a bigger house. Um, in, in, I think a uniqueness to each property that has a specific set of facts okay. and I and, and for me and I think you, you take that and then to me the thing that really makes this unique and interesting is the 19 extra feet of the right-of-way okay. because 
Emerson, and, and it's, it's a very narrow street, but it is never, they're never going to take that right away. <laughs> so you have the city ditch to the south. Uh, if you continue on the south, uh, past the city ditch, there's, there's a bridge. That's even a dead end. So I, I can't foresee that the city would ever <clears throat> take uh, all 19 feet, if anything, for the simple sake. I think it would just be cost prohibitive, and, and there's no need. Okay. Um, and to me, that that is really the interesting crux of this whole case, because even though it sits on the front setback, you suddenly have this extra 19 feet. Right, yeah, at least an extra 10. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, it's when you walk down the street, I mean, the house definitely, because the first thing I, I my first reaction was, oh, I don't want a garage sticking out that far. But when you walk down the street and you look, the house is set back quite a right. distance. Yeah, I went and looked at it today, and I agree with that. So, um, to me, that, uh, you know, I, I think that's the, the interesting part. And, and why I was asking about the back, because originally I was like, oh, what you do is, is take down the carport, you can drive back, put a garage in back, um, even if you had to take down trees. I just don't think that there's that much room to really make use of that. And the grading gets pretty odd at that point, too. I think, yeah. So to me, and, and, and that's kind of why I think as much as I don't think aesthetically it, it's everything. I think it's kind of the best place for the garage. So we're all back to the one foot. Yeah. Do, do we need? I mean, if, if, <laughs> if you all feel like we live with the one foot, it's not a big deal. It's just I don't see any reason to do it. Yeah, um, and I agree with Miss Flynn. I, I, I would I would have a little bit hard more hard of a time if there wasn't already a structure sticking out that, you know, um, I mean, I would, I would encourage, <coughs> as you did, perhaps the applicant to think about removing that, right. but um, since our attorney's not here, I'm not sure, and, and again, I, I don't know if we could do that conditionally or not, because there's nothing we can't right. remove there's a variance that's, yeah. 30 years later. We're not considering that anyhow. True. Right. I mean, that's not part of this whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so if we're happy with the suggested motion, the way it's written. Um, did we want to make that change so that the porch variance is five feet? It, no, it's written right. Is it written right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's written. For a variance. Yeah. Okay. It's written. It's an just well, you're, it's automatically granted five. Feet. Exactly, but technically it's still a variance. Technically, yeah, it's still a variance. So into the twenty-five foot. So correct. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So it, it's, yeah. It's a foot more into the allowed use. Right. Um, and to me, that I, I mean, I, you know, a foot again. I don't think it projects that much because that nineteen foot right of way is really a chunk. So. Uh, so are we happy with this and, and voting on this suggested motion? Yes. You guys want to All right. one foot side uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. All right. So um, just hope we can keep that in there and we can vote um, on that. So let's vote. Ms. Schmitz? Uh, I voted yes. Um, thanks to my colleagues for reminding me of various unique aspects of this uh, property. So with regard to the garage um, front and side setbacks, um, several unique aspects to the property. The, it's a larger lot size. It does not have an alley. Um, placement of the garage at a uh, conforming place in the back of the lot would require significant paving. Um, and cutting down trees. There is uh, 19 extra feet of right of way on this particular block, and there's grading issues as well um, with placement of the garage at the back of the lot. 
Um, and as far as the porch uh, variance portion, um, again, it's a large lot and there's the 19 extra feet of right of way. Um, so for those reasons, uh, I find that unique physical conditions exist um, that are peculiar to the land or structure involved and deprive the applicant of privileges enjoyed by other properties in the vicinity. Um, nobody has identified any issues with public health, safety, or welfare so that uh, criteria is met. Um, it will not permanently impair the use or development of adjacent conforming properties or alter the essential character of the neighborhood. Two car garages are uh, typical in this zone district in this particular area of it. Um, and it's single family residences and front porches are also um, typical of these homes in this area. Uh, and then it's not a self-imposed difficulty or hardship. This isn't a situation that the owners brought upon themselves. Ms. Flynn? I voted yes for the reasons stated. <clears throat> Ms. Purdy? I voted yes for the reasons stated. Mr. Fink? I voted yes for the reasons stated. Chair Finn? Uh, I voted yes for the reasons stated. Uh, spectacularly, <laughs> by the way. Um, the one thing I would add is, is there is a grade change uh, that also uh, should be considered. And I agree that it's, uh, it fits into the neighborhood. Uh, 2771 South Emerson uh, popped the top and they did a, a bigger garage. Um, and it, it's just kind of the way these lots are going if they can fit it. All right, thank you. We will go to I will hand it to them that they did a lot of good neighbor notifications. Uh, I need a, uh, an approval of minutes, if I could get a motion and a second for the minutes dated uh, from November 8th, 2017, which is case number VAR 2017-018-2216 East Dartmouth, Dartmouth Circle. I move that the minutes are approved as written. Do I have a second? A, there's a second. Um, the everyone, uh, actually, Ms. Schmitz, you are not here, so you'll abstain. Um, so all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. I'm oh, are you also the same? Oh, I only have three. I don't remember what we had to do last time. If it, if it is enough, <laughs> all in favor, vote aye. Aye. All opposed? No one's opposed. If it's not, we'll have to revisit this and approve them at the next meeting when we have a appropriate quorum. Uh, approvals of finding a fact uh, from case uh, VAR 2017 we have the same issue, uh, two absent uh, votes, abstaining votes. Um, do I have a motion to uh, approve the finding as a fact? So moved. Second. I second. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, opposed? Two, abs two abstentions. I don't think it, I don't. I don't think I needed you to say. Do, do I need you to say abstain when you vote? Oh, I just, I said it. <laughs> Shelly Shelley knows what's going Thank on. You. She knew. Shelly's on top of it. Did you know? Um, <laughs> uh, perfect. So that's uh, minutes finding a fact. Staff, your choice. Um, I have nothing other than uh, uh, we do have another variance case in January. Which will be Sue's last meeting. 
So you're yeah. going out on quite the street. Saying goodbye every time. <laughs> 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 the longest goodbye you ever saw. Sue's been saying goodbye for 12 years, but I think this might be the final. I've been practicing this thing. <laughs> so next time you look, we look forward to seeing you there. Do <laughs> you have anything, Will? Uh, thank you for, hopefully it wasn't that painless. Well, thank you guys for being so nice. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wait, it'll, it'll come. You'll, you'll, it, eventually a case will pop up. Next month's for a skyscraper, 120 feet tall. Nice. That will be awesome. Uh, In a single family home neighborhood. Right. <laughs> My neighbors. I was about to say, next door to. You were wondering what was going on on your block. <laughs> um, city attorney, there is no city attorney present, so he does not have a choice. Board's choice? No one? Awesome. Uh, we're adjourned. Yay. Yay. Um, now that we're off the record, uh, since next week is Sue's meeting, we will have drinks.